Deputy, Deputy, as I have them here. And an insult to injury, uh, Simon Coveney has also left the chamber and I wanted to address him directly because I want to quote from some things he said to the local authorities recently when he visited them. He said, as you finalise your development plan later this year, I would suggest that you ask yourselves a fundamental question. Is this plan going to be a game changer in terms of unleashing private sector construction on our capital city? Quote number two, we must bear in mind that we will rely on the private sector to build seven or eight out of every ten houses into the future. It is vital that the private sector gets going in a serious way this year and next. I'm going to cut to the chase on the argument because, I, you know, I'm not going to waste too much of my minutes complimenting you all for doing hard work in the report. Well done, everyone. But I have a genuine fear about the report, and it's not an irrational fear. It's a fear that this report will join countless of others gathering dust on shelves. Now, I was a councillor for seven years, and if I read one, I read a thousand reports on housing from various agencies and local authorities. We've probably destroyed a rainforest at this stage. And my fear is not cynical and it's not based on an observation that there has been, and I want to repeat, there has been and is a lack of political will on behalf of the establishment parties, Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael, Labour and in the past the Greens as well, to really grapple the nettle of allowing the uh, social housing be built at the, at, on the altar of private profit. So, one, re one recommendation that this report is linked to this report is the question of uh, rent, um, we don't call it controls, uh, what do we call it, rent certainty. rent certainty. And it's not that long ago that uh, the, the Sinn Féin party put a motion in front of this house for to bring in rent certainty, and both Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael uh, voted against it. So that kind of just to, to throw in a little bit to, to prove my point. We know also that um, the emphasis has been put on the supply side in terms of what we need, but it also means that we're looking at the supply side for the interests of the developers. It means creating conditions called the free market conditions that will allow the same developers to have sufficient profit for them to actually bother building houses. It means that we're going to hugely subsidise developers and their need for profit. Just to quote the CEO of NAMA, Brendan McDonough, many developers are not satisfied with a 20,000 profit on a 300,000 house. They would rather wait until the prices rise to a point at which they can profit at around €50,000 an each house. And Minister Coveney said in his opening remarks, a lot will depend on how quickly the private sector will deliver. I want to emphasise what was being said here earlier on. We are making the same mistake. It's a definition of lunacy. Do the same thing that we did the last time, fail and do it again. So having gone through a failed market built on developers, builders, concessions to them, the Galway tent, the corruption and everything went with it. We are now repeating the same mistake in the middle of a housing emergency. Social housing have been driven down deliberately and consistently by consecutive governments since the dawn of neoliberalism going right back to the late 1980s. That's why we're in the state we're in. Um, and instead of that, we're concentrating on lowering costs to developers to ensure that they have enough profit. We give them funding re rebates on development levies. We give them infrastructure works done by the local authorities for, uh, before they move in. We reduce VAT and we reduce the Part 5 from 20% to 10%. We've reduced apartment sizes and aspects of apartments to allow them to build more. We've lessened and loosened regulations around building in order to ensure that there's enough profit for them, despite haven't been through Priory Hall and Longbow Quay to mention just two. We've studied how to get around central bank rules so people could borrow enough to pay a high enough amount to buy a home and to ensure that there's enough properties for developers. Profit, sorry. We set up special funding bodies, often allied to dubious private equity firms and vulture funds. We have legislated for REITs and safeguarded an efficient, sufficient profit to encourage them to build and rent to our citizens at very high costs. And we have resisted any attempts to strengthen rights or security of tenure for tenants. All of this is to breathe into the market again the life that uh, is missing from it for builders, developers, estate agents, the whole legal and financial nine yards that goes with housing and property development as we have done in the past with the Galway tent. 
Um, I'm reminded when I look over the minister, that's why I'm sorry he's gone, because every time I look at him and he talks about this issue, I'm reminded of Frankenstein and how Frankenstein, as a doctor, tried to breed life back into the monster that he created, shouting at it, live, live, live. And that's exactly what this government and Fianna Fáil are trying to do with the housing market by, by going back to the private market and saying, please live, 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 and we'll throw everything at you uh, to do so. For, so for the 140,000 citizens in housing need, for the 6,000 homeless tonight, many of them children, for those facing rent hikes beyond their means, the housing market is the monster and far from breathing life into that system that has crippled this country before, we should be burying it. We should bury it and start to do what everybody agrees needs to be done. Build social housing, deliver rent controls, security to tenants and socialise what is an essential social need for all our citizens who should have a right to it. I just rem reminded today when I was reading back on an article that Fintan O'Toole wrote, and if I can find it I'll quote him because he's quite funny on it. Um, when he was a, young, a, a child in 1949, his, his family were allocated a house in Crumlin. And he thinking back on it, he was saying, how in the name of God, in the 30s, 40s and 50s, could this state deliver social housing? And he talks about looking at statistics for exports, because we boast about our great exports and how our exports are lifting our economy. And we export all sorts of wonderful things nowadays. In 1949, this official t the official statistics for export showed that the principal export products were felmongery, whatever that is, laces, pig's heads, pollards and snuff. I know pollards are some kind of animals without horns. So imagine the economy that was able to build 50,000 social houses in the 40s while they're exporting snuff and pig's heads. And we can't do it today. And it's because we lack the political will. Uh, a comment on social mix. Social mix is always talked about in terms of Ballymun or Ballyfermot or Finglas. How about talking about social mix in Fox Rock? That never seems to bother anybody, that there isn't a social mix in the very, very wealthy areas. Um, it's ironic that these uh, recommendations are coming to us, and I'm finishing up on this. In the same week or month as the unfolding scandal of NAMA in, of the sale of assets in Northern Ireland uh, has come before us and a very sensible resolution by Deputy Mick Wallace was rejected by the main parties in this house, both government and so-called opposition. And indeed in the same month, a very simple bill that we put uh, as, actually asking to amend the remit of NAMA to alter it for its primary purpose to deal with the housing crisis and the building and provision of social and affordable homes was ruled out of order, ruled out of order and not taken by this house. That's only one page long, not 150 pages, and it couldn't be accepted even to be debated and to lose a vote on the, on the floor of the doll. Um, so just finishing on NAM, I think any sensible government, anyone who really means it, would change NAMA's remit and tell them from here on in, no more selling off our land and our houses to vulture funds. Use that resources that you Thank have you. and the money that you've gained to deal with this housing crisis. Thank you. Dan. And uh, I just want to reiterate uh, to, to, to people to watch this space because Thank there is no difference between you. You are all the same. Thank you you's all gave we'll us gave this you legacy. You, you speak slightly different kind of tones. Thank but you. you're all the same and thank you won't you. be able to deal with it by relying on the developers, the builders and okay, those who have you. greased your palms in the past. Just,